Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, we will be continuing the audio classification project using deep learning. Now we are in the top part two, part one of EDA we already discussed. And again, guys, if you have not seen this specific video, please go and check it out. It is in my complete deep learning playlist and already I have uploaded this particular video over here. I'll just share you the link also and I'll show you the link over here itself and uh, Please make sure that you watch this video then only you go with respect to this particular video because in this video we are going to do the data pre-processing. So let me just quickly show it to you that uh, what all things we discussed in the EDA part of audio classification right. We took a sample of data right we took a sample of data we saw that how the waves were getting generated and based on this we could take out some more information like sample rate like um, uh, what is the uh, channels what is different types of channels like mono and stereo everything we had discussed and we had seen some of the files called as metadata.csv uh, which is also called as urban sound k.csv this is basically mapping of the audio file with respect to the folder because if i go and see my data set my data set looks something like this urban sound audio fold 1 fold 2 fold 3 fold uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So these all folds are actually there. If you have not seen the first part, again, see it, please, guys. I'll uh, give you the description. I'll give you the link in the description, okay? So, guys, before going ahead with respect to this particular video, I need to announce iNeuron is coming up with the affordable machine learning and deep learning master's course, uh, which is starting from 10th April, and the timing is 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Apart from this, iNeuron is also coming up with the affordable DLCV NLP course, and again, this particular course is starting from 17th April 2021 and the class timing is from 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. With respect to the affordable course, guys, the course fee is 3540 where you'll be getting the entire content for lifetime. Apart from this, if you enroll also, you'll also be getting a pre-recorded videos uh, wherein you will be able to complete this particular course in fast track. Apart from this, there are a lot of features where they provide you live Skype support team, all seven days in a week sky support team career guidance email support doubt learning session and many more things so just check it out all the information regarding this particular course will be given in the description of this particular video so now let's go ahead and now we are going to do something called as audio classification data pre-processing which is pretty much important now in this what we are going to do is that remember guys i told you that whenever we read any audio signal you know we usually get uh, two channels right so one channel is basically the audio may be recorded in a mono channel or a stereo channel itself and apart from that we have also understood that uh, you know with with respect to some sample rate like 44 kilohertz you know some of the videos are getting recorded audios are getting recorded in 44 kilohertz it is being sa uh, saved in that specific sample rate now in the previous session also we have seen that by using librosa right Librosa will make sure that the sample rate, you know, that we will be basically loading, it will keep it in 21 kilohertz and the audio data that we actually have, it will try to normalize it between minus one to plus one so that we'll be able to see the uh, data in a normalized pattern itself. Now, once we get that specific data, now we need to extract some important information and then we have to basically keep our data set in the form of independent and dependent features. Over here, independent features should be the extracted features from the audio signals and the dependent feature needs to be the class label names, right? Like which class it actually belongs to and that we obviously will be getting from this particular urban uh, sound 8k.csv. So this is the class that I'm actually having, right? This is my output feature or my dependent feature. So let's proceed. What we are going to do over here is that I'll just take one example of uh, uh, audio file. So this is the path that I have given. In Urban Sound 8K, I have stored a WAV audio file, wave audio file. And in this, when I'm doing load of that particular audio file path, I'm getting two information that is audio data and the sample rate. If I go and execute it, and if I go and execute this audio data, over here, you'll be able to see that this audio data, by default, Librosa converts any audio data into only one channel, that is mono channel. In mono channel, I'll just be getting one, uh, it will be just like one dimension of information. There will not be two features because in mono, remember, there will be only one signals. In stereo, there will be two or three or four different different number of signals will be there. By default, uh, Librosa will definitely convert this into a one dimension signal, right? 
Uh, if I take an example with respect to plotting this particular graph, you can see over here I have taken this audio data and I'm just plotting it in the form of this plot over here. You will be able to see this is how the data is basically distributed. Now, let's see that how the two channels will look like. Okay, so I'll, I'll be taking the same audio file path here. I'll be using something called a SkyPy. Now in SkyPy, we have something called as wave file <clears throat> in this library. When it reads the audio file path, it will keep that particular path with in which ever channel that is. Okay. So usually uh, a audio file may have a single channel. It may also have a double channel. Okay. So the single channel is called as mono and the second channel or the channels with two are basically called as stereo. So once I'm executing this here, if you go and see your wave underscore audio here, now I'm having two dimensions, two features. This is basically 194, 100, 179, 113, right? These all features are basically there. Now here you can see this particular example with the help of Librosa, we just got one feature and this was normalized completely between minus one to plus one. But in this particular case that you are actually seeing here, you have basically two channels and this two channels will be very, very important. And remember guys, with respect to two channels that we are actually checking out, this will be the information that is by default given by the this particular wave file right just see this librosa by default converts that into a mono channel okay now i have this now if i try to execute this with the help of a plot diagram and if i go and see this wave audio see wave audio is nothing but my data right like how we have this particular data over here like librosa audio data so by default i'll be getting this type of graph this is because of two channels right this is a, like a stereo channel so two channels you can see the data that is getting plotted over here okay fine this is perfect now remember in order to create our independent and dependent features and what is the advantage of Librosa now with this two channels will be there anyhow it will try to convert into one channel right so this will get converted something like this now my main thing is that I will take the signals and I'll try to create some independent features which will basically represent that particular audio data which is the most important task how we are going to do that guys for that we have a technique which is called as mel frequency capstral coefficients again this is a heavy technique with respect to audio signal processing okay this is a very tough topic altogether but what i have done is that i found out a video for you all so this is an amazing video that has been uh, given by valerio valerado uh, he has actually explained it very nicely what is mel frequency capstral coefficients just go through this particular video the link will be given in the description in short let me just explain this what it will do the mfcc summarizes the frequency distribution across the window side so it is possible to analyze both the frequency and time characteristics of the sound this audio representatives will allow us to identify feature for classification so it will try to convert the audio into some kind of uh, features based on the frequency and time characteristics which will actually help us to do the classification if you really want to know all the mathematical details definitely it will not be possible in this particular video so i found out a video for you all uh, it is pretty much good he has explained in an amazing way you can check it out okay now what i'm going to do is that if I really want to just apply it for a single file, I will be importing Librosa and then we have something called as Librosa.feature.mfcc. Now when I have this, I just have to give my audio data and then I have to give my sample rate and there is a parameter which is called as n underscore mfcc MF which is equal to 40. This 40 is being assigned. You can also play with different different parameters like 50, like 30 and all. Now once I execute this, you will be able to see that that all audio signal, right? It got converted into a uh, uh, array of dimension 40 comma 173. And this is basically the data that you will be able to see. And remember, this is nothing but these are patterns that has been extracted based on the frequency and time characteristics. Okay. And this will uniquely able to identify that particular audio signal, like to in which class it will actually belong because this audio signal will be later using in deep learning techniques in order to do it. But this was an example with respect to only one file we have to, and there are more than 8,000 files that we have actually seen over here, right? We have seen so many folders, so many files are there right and we basically need to apply all these particular things for all the files now in order to do that what we are going to do is that we are going to import pandas as pd 
uh, import OS, import Librosa. I'm going to take the audio path. So audio path is basically inside ultra urban sound K uh, slash audio. I'm also going to read the metadata file because this file is basically having the mapping with respect to the folder and the slice uh, and the file name. Okay. So I'm just going to take all this particular path. Let's quickly execute it. After this, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a feature. This feature extractor is a function which takes a file name and then we are going to use the librosa.load. Once we use librosa.load from the file, it is going to take out two information. One is the audio and the other one is the sample rate. Okay. Then we are going to use the librosa.feature.mfcc like how we have applied over here, right? The same thing we are going to take it over here. We are going to give the audio and sample rate and again n underscore mfcc so that we can play with it. Finally, in order to find out the scaled feature, we will be doing a mean on the transpose of this particular value that we are actually getting. Okay, this is very much important. So let me just write this over here. MCFS. Uh, okay, uh, I think. Uh, MCF, M, MCFSS. Okay, fine. So what we are going to do, I'm just going to write it over here. MC, uh, M, MFCCS underscore features dot transpose. But just doing the transpose of this, we are just going to do all this particular feature engineering, and we are going to just find NP dot mean so that we'll be getting the scale feature. Now, once I execute this, this is the function that I'm going to execute it. Now, this is just for one audio file. Now, in order to do it for all the audio files i have to iterate thre through this particular csv file now when i want to iterate through it how i'll do it i'll just write import numpy as np i'm going to use numpy for this i'm also going to use tqdm so that i'll be able to see the progress now i have created a list which is called as extracted feature i'm going to iterate through metadata dot iter rows so metadata dot iter rows suppose there is a data frame iter rows will actually help us to iterate through all the rows and then I'm going to basically write os.path.join os.path.absolutePath. Here we are going to just take that specific data set path what I have actually given over here. And then it is going to map with the help of folders and the folder number. After this, we'll also be able to find out the slice file name. Slice file name basically means it will just go and pick up this particular file name and it will extract that particular information. Once I get the file name, then we are just going to get the class because see, this is my output feature class, right? I'm going to take this two information and I'm to, I'm going to pass this file name in the feature extractor. This feature extractor is going to give me this MFCCS scaled features. And then we are going to store that in a data variable. After that, I'm just going to append this list, this list that I've created with my data and the final class labels. That's it. That is what we are doing. The reason why I'm appending it because later on I'll convert this into a data frame. Okay. So why we are doing it? We are just creating our independent features and dependent features. And when we are appending this in a list later on, we'll be able to convert this into a data frame. So let me just quickly execute it. Once I execute it, it'll take some amount of time. Uh, let's see how much time it will take. Okay. So quickly it is happening. Uh, the total number of files that are present over there is somewhere around 8,000. Now you can see 240, 250, 70, 80. We'll just wait till the 8000 iteration is done. But remember guys, why we are doing this is that because using this MEL frequency cluster coefficients, it is going to extract some important information based on frequency and time data. And then we are just iterating here. We are just iterating through each and every audio file and we are extracting the information and we're getting the class. And then we are basically appending all this particular information into this, right? That is what we are actually doing. Afterwards, we'll take this and we'll convert this into a data frame. So it'll probably take some more time, like uh, it has gone to uh, 1200 iterations. Till then, let's wait. Uh, but I hope you're understanding this. Uh, I hope how, see, usually the audio signal processing is a little bit difficult. It's not that easy to understand because you need to have a good amount of domain knowledge. So I have also explored some of the videos. So I'm telling you this specific video because I was able to understand the MEL frequency cholesterol coefficients, right? So please make sure that you watch this video. It will be very, very helpful. Understand just again, if you really don't want to deep dive into it, because this will work with any kind of audio file, right? So you just have to use this MEL frequency cholesterol coefficient. Just try to extract the features which are pretty much important from the audio signal so that it will help you to classify. That is what we are actually doing. Okay. So uh, till then, let's wait and uh, probably it will take some amount of time. Okay. And uh, I will continue after the training, uh, af after this entire thing is actually running uh, for all the 8000 files. Okay. 
so guys we can see that it is being about to get completed uh, so probably it is again going to run for some more iteration and once this is done the entire iteration is done now you can see that it has got executed 8732 iterations now what we are going to do is that we are converting this entire uh, you know list basically this is a list we'll convert this into a data frame so in order to convert it we're just writing pd dot data frame extracted underscore feature with column names are feature and class because two informations are there one is feature and one is class so once i execute this so here you'll be able to see this particular information and this looks pretty much good this information again understand that these are my features for this particular class these are my features for this particular class, right? These are my features for this particular class. So everything I'm able to see over here, you can see that, right? Uh, these two features looks almost same, right? Almost same. So obviously if children are playing, uh, whenever we are giving this particular input to our machine learning models, we'll be able to find it out, right? Now, the next thing is that we'll split this entire data set into independent and dependent features. Very simple, we're taking these features, we're converting into two list, and we're converting into an array. Similarly for y, y is nothing but this is my class. So the extracted features underscore df of class to list. This is pretty much simple. I hope everybody knows this. And if I go and see my x.sape, I can see that, okay, they are total 8732 records. Uh, now, two things that I'm actually going to do. Uh, I don't require label encoding because I was thinking of doing uh, label encoding to my class feature instead of this what I can do is that I can directly use pd dot get dummies uh, from the pandas itself so once I execute it this is done if I go and see my y dot shape y dot shape so here it is 8732 and 10 features now after this guys what we are going to do is that we are going to do a train test split and inside the train test split we are going to give our x feature y feature test size is 20 and random state is equal to 0 now, once I do it, uh, this is my xtrain dot xtrain underscore dot shape. Uh, here we are having six nine eight five uh, rows and forty features. Uh, you can see this in x test dot shape. We are having one seven four seven and forty. Remember one thing, guys. Uh, this why why it is having ten features because we have ten classes, right? Like this classes we have ten, and uh, we have just converted into get dummies so that we'll be able to have uh, you know each and every feature will be given uh, in the uh, suppose. Uh, Suppose the first class is basically dog bark. So it'll become one zero 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 like that. Uh, similarly, we will be able to see that there'll be 10 features and every time in every record, there'll be one ones and remaining all will be zeros. Okay. Now here I've got my X train, S test, uh, Y train, y, uh, y test. And here is my data pre-processing that has got completed. At the end of the day, I'm able to see something very, very much important. This is my entire X train, which will basically represent my independent feature. And in this feature only I'll be training it. And based on this particular feature, I will also be having my Y value. So Y value will be like this for this first independent features. This is my output class. And probably this is whichever class it is. Suppose it is uh, for the second one, it is this particular class, right? So I have actually made this. Uh, I have got my independent and dependent feature. Now in the next particular session, we are just going to apply a deep learning model. Till then, I think you can try it out, try to apply a deep learning model like an ANN. Uh, and then we'll just let me know like what kind of accuracy you're uh, getting. Till then, uh, I'll just come up in the next session and try to implement the next part. Okay. So I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one all. Bye-bye.